Anna Adrian here. So yes, we are here for a book review today, but it's not going to be a gothic one. So a uh, little bit of a departure, but there's a good reason for it. So as you guys probably know, I have moved closer to the Seattle area recently. I have left my job as a medical phlebotomist and I'm currently working as a phlebotomist in blood donation, which has been a very radical change but my stress levels and my health have been so much better since moving, you have no idea. <laughs> I've also taken up aerial silks as a fun way to get fit and learn a new art form, so that's been pretty fun. I'm also happy to report that it's been helping the issue that I have in the rotator of my right hip from an old injury that I sustained several years ago, so that's definitely another plus very happy about that. So not only that, but now that I am closer to Seattle, I'm within a closer proximity of my Seattle friends, and I'm actually starting to get invited to some fantastic parties. Pretty cool. And one of those parties happened toward the end of August, and the host was author, musician, and very accomplished dancer, Gregory Eric Phillips. I first met Gregory at my comeback concert back in June. We later connected on social media, and he invited me to his party at the end of August to celebrate the end of summer. It was a lot of fun. I made some great connections there, including someone who booked me for my first paid performance ever. Wow, how did that happen? Which is amazing. I honestly did not think that was going to happen for another five years, but it happened. Uh, change of location can really do a lot. So the reason we're here is to talk about one of Gregory's books called A Season in Lights. It was published in 2021 and just like my song Goddess in a Glass, it is a love letter to artists, particularly those in the performing arts, so I feel that I connected with it on a deeper level. The novel is told in three acts from the perspectives of two different people and two different time periods in New York City. One is from the perspective of Cammy, a dancer in her mid-30s in 2019, and of Tom, Cammy's lover, an older musician reflecting on his early days in New York in 1986 as an aspiring classical pianist. Cammy lands her first gig in an off-Broadway show, and Tom is right there to support her, and yet she's held back by the burden of family troubles pulling her back to her hometown. Her sister, who at one point was an aspiring painter, is struggling with a drinking problem. Her mother is still working a tough job to support the family, and her father's health is declining. Now, as far as the first few chapters are concerned with sharing the stories of these two incredible characters, um, there was a particular passage that, let's just say, had my heart in a death grip. Why did I wait so long? Why waste all those years in ease and comfort when it would never stop the demon clutching at my heels? Why, when this was here for me all along? The answer wasn't complicated. I had been too afraid to try. Somehow it was easier to wallow in depression than to shake up my life. Wow. So why did it strike me on such a visceral level? Because that's exactly how I felt for years before moving closer to Seattle to pursue my dream of being an opera singer. I felt like I didn't deserve to move closer to Seattle to chase my dreams because I wasn't nearly good enough yet and probably never would be. But now, one of my, actually no, yes, my, my biggest regret in my life is not moving closer to Seattle sooner. So reading that passage was like looking at my soul in a mirror and Gregory articulated something perfectly, lyrically, and beautifully into written words in a way that I couldn't even dream of expressing, so bravo on that, sir. In alternating chapters, Tom's story is also told. In his side of the narrative, we're transported to New York in 1986, where Tom aspires to be a classical pianist. Much like Cammy in 2019, he also has family obligations that somewhat interfere with his dreams, such as his struggling brother Art wanting to accompany him to New York. It also doesn't help that as a black man, Tom is stereotyped as a jazz musician, even though his heart truly lies with classical. 
He lands a job as an accompanist in a studio of a ballet instructor, a gay man named Charles. And up comes another passage that really brought tears to my eyes because it's so true. And it was Charles essentially giving a pep talk to Tom about his aspirations. You'll always have your art. Art is a difficult but faithful lover. It is you who must remain faithful. Every artist has times when they want to quit or when they don't think they deserve their success or worst of all, when people in your life discourage you even if they don't know they're doing it. Don't let anyone take away your art from you, but more importantly, don't ever take it away from yourself. Okay, I promised I would not get choked up in this video, but uh, here we are. I've been in that position of wanting to quit way too many times, but something in me has always pulled me out of that mindset and told me to keep going. Reading that passage convinced me that I'm right where I need to be, and this is where I belong, and this is what I need to do. As time passes while Tom is finding his place in New York, he finds Charles increasingly more troubled by the AIDS epidemic as more young men in his friends group and community are claimed by the virus. This is mirrored by the COVID pandemic, eventually shutting down Cammy's success as a dancer in the dawn of 2020, and the events unfolding in both eras are really, really striking. I definitely felt that creeping fear, oppression, and apprehension all over again as Gregory described the, um, the state of New York after the COVID shutdown. I really, really definitely identified with those passages. So. In regard to this story, I really wanted to take a moment to talk about how I related to the last few chapters of the book because I feel like I have a bit of a unique perspective on it, and I think that's part of the reason why I was very deeply touched and affected by this story, even though it's not my normal choice of literature, but again, um, getting to know Gregory and the kind of person he is really lured me into wanting to read this and I'm really really glad I did but anyway I'm going to get into why I felt particularly affected by this story so just to offer some perspective and to be honest I haven't really touched on my experience working as a medical phlebotomist at my last job and I I think it's really important that we talk about it a little bit so I really absorbed this novel from the perspective of both an aspiring performing artist and as a healthcare worker. While I wasn't working as a medical phlebotomist at the time COVID started, um, you know, I started working as a medical phlebotomist in early 2021, but it still got pretty ugly. I felt the detrimental effect of it as an artist. I lost out on so many opportunities to perform and audition that I could have had if the pandemic wasn't a thing. I had my first performance in Seattle in um, January of 2019 as a guest singer with the gothic metal band Urn. Um, COVID shut down everything in March of 2020, but nearly a year and a half after that, the lead singer of that band actually passed away from complications of COVID. And I remember being so angry and inconsolable when I learned of his passing, especially when I was dealing with COVID in one form or another every single day at work. Yeah, whether it was through antibody testing or collecting COVID PCR tests, getting constantly yelled at by people demanding to be told their COVID results over the phone, which I was not allowed to do or I would lose my job. Uh, patients being incredibly disrespectful and refusing to wear a mask around me and other healthcare personnel. And I even had one accidentally break their mask so that they could get out of wearing it. Yes, this actually happened to me. And having to put layers and layers of gowns on and wearing an N95 and a surgical mask over it to go into the rooms of COVID patients to draw blood. Yeah. And mind you, those of you who have been watching me for a while and know that I have a heat intolerance, can you imagine how uncomfortable and awful that was um, to be in layers and layers of protective gear when you have a heat intolerance? 
There were several times when I would come out of those rooms feeling like I was going to pass out. That was not fun. It was incredibly uncomfortable, and that's why I would get really frustrated when patients would look me dead in the eye and complain about how uncomfortable it was wearing a standard surgical mask. You know, because a flimsy little surgical mask is totally the same and as uncomfortable as wearing an N95 and wearing, you know, personal protective equipment. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, obviously the surgical mask is so bothersome in comparison. So I was in danger not only of catching COVID, which I eventually did just two and a half weeks before I flew to LA to record Goddess in the Glass, but I was also in danger of physical harm even if I wasn't dealing with a COVID patient. I've been in some scary situations, drawing blood in the ER, and I've almost been attacked and assaulted several times. You guys probably know I'm not a big person, so that would not have been a good situation for me if things did get dangerous. Um, Noah, if you're watching, he was an amazing ER tech that I worked with at my last job. You saved my life, I can't thank you enough, and I still owe you dinner for that. And the reason why I say that because, you know, a lot of people are just probably thinking like, Adrian, you were just drawing blood, what's the big deal? But People don't realize how dangerous it is to draw blood on someone who is erratic and unpredictable and is thrashing and is constantly fighting you when you're trying to draw blood. Um, even just bending your elbow or like snatching your arm away can get extremely dangerous for anyone in the room, anyone in close proximity. So yes, when you make any sudden movements like that while you're trying to draw blood from someone or while someone's trying to draw blood from you rather, a can get really dangerous. So anyway, I'll just leave, leave that there. <laughs> I saw firsthand how the pandemic really affected people's mental health in a very detrimental way. I was even there for someone's last moments of life, trying to draw blood while they were coding. Um, their time of death declared, I would say probably about maybe 30 seconds after I attempted to get blood per the doctor's orders. That was rough and that gave me even more respect for nurses and everything they do. And mind you guys, I was just a phlebotomist. I was not a nurse and I still saw some shit. But all I wanted to do at the end of the day was to help people by doing my small part of quickly and painlessly drawing blood so that we can figure out what was going on with them so that they could get better. And in my downtime at work, I studied my sheet music in the lab. So. I'm really glad that I didn't quit doing music. I continued my musical education, even when things seemed hopeless and so many opportunities to put myself out there as an aspiring opera singer were suddenly taken away. I will say though, there were some positives that came out of my previous job. Um, some of my patients were absolutely lovely and were very happy to see me, even though I had a needle in my hand. And um, they were very sad to hear that I was moving elsewhere when it was time for me to go. And one of them even said, aww, you were my favorite one <laughs> when it was my last day of work. Uh, I, was, I was really sad but glad to hear that. And then uh, one of my patients even made me some handmade bracelets. Um, I'm wearing some of them right here. Absolutely gorgeous. She did an amazing job estimating what size my wrist was, but you know, considering I was wearing extra small gloves, and I was one of the only people that wore extra small gloves at my last job, uh, you know, it was pretty easy for her to figure out what size wrist I was. And uh, some of my patients even sent me flowers, and that was really, really sweet. I even got a bouquet of roses on my last day of work, so that was really nice. So my friend, uh, Dominic St. Charles, the lead singer of Urn, was such a great man, and I'm never going to forget him, his kindness, or the chance that he gave me. He wasn't even 50 years old. He was in great health and he was fairly active. I went back to that apprehension and despair um, toward the end of the novel when people around Cammy were being hospitalized for COVID. So I could really identify with those parts, both as the apprehensive and scared artist and the burnt out and exhausted healthcare worker. My first performance in Seattle with Urn was in 2019 at the Rendezvous, which is where I had my comeback concert in June of this year, of 2023, as of filming this. And I wanted to have my comeback concert there to pay tribute to 
my friend who passed away in 2021. Um, also because I just happened to love the venue. And that worked out really well. And that's also where I met Gregory at my comeback concert earlier this year. So it, it's kind of weird how things come full circle like that, isn't it? So I'm not going to get too much more into detail about the story because I really want you guys to read it for yourself. And I, I just want to say A Season of Lights was so well crafted. Um, I will say all of the characters, even the secondary ones, are so real and multidimensional and it's so easy to assume their perspectives as you read on. I also really appreciated the romantic and slightly spicy scenes. Uh, they were sensual without being overly graphic as a lot of modern novels are nowadays because I feel like they feel like they, they can get away with it and that's why they make it super spicy, but um, the spice level was perfect in my opinion. <laughs> And the ending, as a musician, the final symbol of love between Tom and Cammie just absolutely broke my heart. Um, but moments later, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what it is. Uh, Gregory breaks your heart one moment and then warms it the next. I was very deeply moved and touched by this novel, and I want to say thank you to Gregory for coming to my comeback concert. It really meant a lot to me because I'm still a nobody as far as the Seattle opera scene is concerned, but you still came and supported me. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> and thank you so much for sharing your beautifully written work with me, inviting me to your party, introducing me to some amazing people, and for being there on October 14th for my first paid performance as a singer. I really appreciated it. Fun fact actually, my first paid performance was on October 14th of this year and I sang a couple of French art songs and it was my first live performance of Goddess in a Glass. And here's the really spooky part. It was a year to the date of me recording it in LA on October 14th of 2022, last year in Tim Janssen's studio. That's incredible. Again, things came full circle, and I, I love it when that happens. So if you're an artist, or if you love artists and art, or you just love the performing arts in general, I highly recommend that you check out this book, and I'm truly not just saying that because my friend wrote it. Um, it'll tug at your heartstrings, yet it will uplift and inspire you at the same time. It's given me new hope, and I no longer feel like it's too late for me as an artist just because I'm approaching my 30s and I'm just starting to gain traction as an artist. A Season in Lights is indeed a beacon of hope. It has given me new motivation as a singer and as an artist, and instead of feeling like, feeling like I'm uh, going nowhere, I'm actually having dreams. Positive dreams for once, not nightmares about what my future as an artist will be like. So thank you, Gregory, appreciate it. So I will leave a link to buy Gregory's book and a link to his website and everything, all that good stuff in the description below so that you guys can go check it out. He has two other books that he's written and he told me that A Season in Lights is his favorite of the three books that he has published so far. And without uh, reading the other two books that he has put out thus far, I can still understand why that this is his favorite because it comes from a place of love and admiration and adoration of the arts that this book came from. So I'm really, really happy about that. Okay, now that I'm done blubbering, thank you so much everyone for watching. I know this was a little different for my normal book and literary reviews, but I really hope that you check out A Season in Lights. And again, I will leave links in the description and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications for more videos on the goth subculture, gothic literature, absinthe, and goth music, all that good stuff. And thank you so much to my patrons every single month for your support. I really, really appreciate it. I literally could not do it without you. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you and I will see you guys next time. Bye.